We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. love for you is here Romans chapter 8 and verse 12 therefore brother uh, verse 14 rather because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear but you have received the spirit of sonship and by him we cry Abba father the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God God wants you today to understand who you are. He says, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you are a son or a daughter of God. You're a child of the King. His royal blood now flows through your veins. His glory comes through in your life because God wants us to understand that He wants that kind of a relationship with us. Each one of us is so important to God 
God cherishes you, God loves you, and God holds you in his strong arm. Hallelujah. How many of you know today that God is with you? How many of you know that God is for you? How many of you know that God loves you with an everlasting love? Oh, hallelujah, that is beyond human comprehension. Oh, I want you to know today, when you understand who He is and your relationship with Him, you'll begin to be in awe of Him. Oh, hallelujah. You see, some people don't understand Him very well, and so that's why they're not drawn to Him, because they misunderstand Him. They have false notions. False ideas about who God is. But you know, here today the Bible says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Hallelujah. I want you to know today you can be led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is that which draws us to our Abba Father. The Spirit of God is what you felt as you were singing something welling up deep with inside of you. That was moving and stirring. Jesus said out of the innermost of your being shall flow what? Rivers of living water. This he spoke of the spirit. So when we come into a place of worship and we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we understand the love of our father towards us. Then we begin to be in awe of him. You see, today God has taught us the principles of how to be a loving father. A loving father encourages his children. A loving father builds up his children. You see, today God is going to encourage you. Whatever you're going through today, I've got good news for you. God is with you in the midst of the storm. God is with you no matter what you face. I know some of you have come across some mountains and you say, Well, Lord, that mountain is too great. That obstacle is too great. But today I've got news for you. You can speak to that mountain and say, Be removed in the name of Jesus Christ and have faith in your heart. Whatever the problem is, you can speak to it and tell it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's something come against you or against your family, you speak to it and you tell it to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I, I never did like bullies. You know, bullies try to come in and, and they try to, to, to uh, intimidate. You know, Satan's like that. The Bible says he roams to and fro around the world seeking those whom he may devour. But you know what? He also told us, God said, that God's power has enabled you and he's given to you all authority has been given to you on heaven and on earth to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. You see, the father protects his children. The father loves his children. And when the enemies come in, the father goes out to... To meet the enemies and to fight them off. And you see, that's the way it is in God's kingdom. Your, your enemy today are thoughts that would come in and try to plague your life. Try to pull you down. Try to tell you that you're in a situation that there's no hope. But I've got good news for you today. God is the God of hope. God is a God of faith. God is a God of love. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And today what we need to do is get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in the presence of the Most High God and enjoy His glorious presence today. Hallelujah. You see, God understands that in this world we have battles. And He knows that we need to be filled with His presence. Because in His presence is fullness of joy. At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, I think about David. David, he was being chased and, and Saul wanted to kill him. You know, uh, Saul was, was afraid of David because the anointing was upon David. God had chosen Saul to be king for a while, but then David would take the throne later. But Saul was afraid that David was going to try to take the throne from him. You see, sometimes people let these fears get into their life. But he says, but God has not given us a spirit of slavery, of the fear again. He said, God wants us to understand that we're his children. You know, if you're a slave, you're a servant, and you have to do what you have to do because it's your job. And so uh, whenever you're, we're working any kind of a job, we're, we're usually serving other people. And so, you know, when we're a servant, we're there and we know that we're paid because we're a, a served, we're working for that person. But he said, I'm not going to call you servants anymore. I call you my friends. I call you my sons and daughters. 
Hallelujah. Because you see, a loving father says that we're heirs to God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Oh, I want you to know, God says you're his heir. Do you know who you are today? You're an heir to God. You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What that means is, is that God is with you and, the, and that Je as Jesus is his son, God's son. And Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. He was resurrected on the day of first fruits. He was resurrected to say he was the first one to come out out of the grave hallelujah by God calling him out of the grave never to die again but he went right in ascended into the presence of God and God said that same spirit that came into him and took him up into the heavenly holy of holies he said he's come to help you to draw you closer to your Abba Father that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead oh hallelujah that spirit is alive in you and he quickens you right now as you hear the word of God the spirit quickens you you. He stirs up your spirit and he makes you just want to glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, the loving Father is there with us through everything. You know, we're a child of the King today. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a child of the King and the rights of his throne. I'm an heir to God. So I'm going to walk like it. I'm going to act like it. Oh, hallelujah. As David said one time, why so downcast, oh my, oh yeah, my soul? Put your trust in God. See, David was running from Saul because he was afraid in the natural, but yet he knew that God had his hand upon him. You know, he had a friend, didn't he? Jonathan was David's son. And Jonathan warned David. He said, Saul wants to take your life. He said, it's time for you to get out of town. You know, sometimes there's somebody that God sends into our life to give us a warning. And we need to listen to those warnings. When God has a warning for us, we need to listen to him. David listened. You see, he was anointed by God. He had defeated Goliath. He knew that God had his hand upon his life, but at that moment in time, it was time for him to go and to, to move into a different area so that he was able to avoid Saul's wrath. But I want you to know today that God is with you. It doesn't matter who's throwing a spear at you. Now, sometimes it's not a physical spear. It's a verbal spear. And they're throwing them at you, trying to beat you down. But I want you to know today, the Spirit of God rises up within you and says, I am with you. I will sustain you. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Oh, hallelujah. Because him who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, I want you to know today you can rejoice. And I say again, rejoice. Because your Father, your Abba Father, is there for you and He is there to carry you. You know, there's been times when you've had to rely upon your Father's strength to carry you. When you were a little boy or a little girl, you remember ever saying, I'm tired, Dad. They ever pick you up and carry you from the car to the house and put you in bed? You knew you were loved and cherished. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful when you have had a good father that has poured into your life, shared those experiences with you, and walked with you through various things? It makes you say, thank you, God, for my father. Hallelujah. And as Delroy shared with us, you know, some, some have been raised by fathers who've had their own issues and carried them in, and, and uh, sometimes they've not been the best father. In fact, some fathers have uh, abandoned their families, and some fathers have uh, been very abusive to their children and so forth. But, you know, many times it's out of their pain, but it's no excuse because it doesn't matter what we've been through. You see, we can look to God to make us the person that he wants us to be. Amen? Did you know God is making you into the man or woman that you want to be inside? And you see, today, it's like, I like what Lynn said, too. Even if in the past you've made some mistakes, isn't it great to know that today, hallelujah, you can begin to make the right steps. You can begin to live the life that you are called to live. You can begin to listen to the voice of the Spirit that will make you a man of character 
character will make you a person that will inspire other people. Oh, I want you to know and your children will know they're loved. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know today God's Spirit is moving in you and through you and speaking to you about His mighty love. Oh, it's a love that never quits giving. It keeps giving. You're an heir to God. That means what he has is yours. Hallelujah. He's the God of this universe. So I'm an heir to God and join heirs with Jesus Christ. Did you know what? Jesus is the first fruits. And he says, come on up here. I want you to walk with me, Phil. I want you to walk with me, Jack. I want you to walk with me, Sharon. I'm going to make you a joint heir with me. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. That's why Jesus said to Peter, All power and authority is given unto me, and behold, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Now whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You see, we've got to take charge of our lives under God's authority, and we begin to operate in the authority that God has given to us. Oh, hallelujah. As God was able to be creative, so you have been made creative. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you like God's artwork? You ever look at a sunset and you think, oh, God, that's awesome. Ever seen Rio de Janeiro where it's got a statue of Christ overlooking the city? And I think, wow, God, you've made some awesome places. How many of you have ever looked over the Grand Canyon and you thought, wow, God, what an awesome sight. Oh, hallelujah. I remember carrying my little niece into Florida, and she was up in Georgia. And she came across getting near the Georgia and Florida line, and she started saying, palm trees, palm trees, palm trees. We go a little further, palm trees. She just loved those palm trees. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's telling you that as you see more palm trees, the winter's going to be warmer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The taller they get, the warmer it is in the winter. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the simple things still make me in awe of God. That creative force that God has is a creative force in your life. Because sometimes your life needs the breath of that spirit to flow in. Because you see, you face some things. They tried to beat you down. Like David, you may have had to, to get out of a situation or two. And you may have found yourself in difficult times, but God is saying to you, I've got more for you. Hallelujah. I've got more for you. I've got greater things for you. Oh, hallelujah. You know, sometimes that voice will come in and say, well, you know, it's, it's, my life's over. It's nothing good is going to happen. Get rid of that voice. It's the lie of the devil. The thief cometh not but to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come. Oh, aren't you glad he came? I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. Are you walking in that abundance? I'm walking in abundance. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. If I come over to your house and you pull out some dessert, I'm going to have it in abundance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm giving you fair warning. Amen. Praise God. Now, I have been on a diet, and I said, give me a little piece. Thank God they don't last forever. Hallelujah. But you see, God loves to bless his children. Oh, praise the Lord. And when you begin to walk in that spirit, oh, praise the Lord, then you begin to walk in such confidence because God is with you. Hallelujah. You see, confidence is a great thing. God gives you confidence. To know that you can accomplish the task. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Amplified says who infuses me with his mighty power. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you want to be infused with more of God's power? Hallelujah. We've got a mission to accomplish. We've got families to raise. You say, well, pastor, I've already raised mine. How many of you know as long as you got kids, you still got family to raise? <laughs> Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. And the fathers should be appreciated. I know the family so much appreciate that guidance in their life. You know, the Lord calls us fathers to be the shepherds, to lead our families into the promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, the thing is, is there were times that the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And we could be in the wilderness for a time. But we need to get our eyes on where he's taking us to. That he's bringing us out of the wilderness into the promised land. Amen. So if you feel like, well, I've, I feel like I'm in the wilderness today. I've got news for you. The Holy Spirit will lead you into the promised land. Oh, hallelujah, you don't have to stay there. Oh, praise God. Isn't it good today to know that God's Spirit is working in your life? Oh, praise the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord is moving us. So whether you have a, a, a human father or not, you always have your heavenly Father guiding you through this life. Pouring in. Those times, I cherish those times with my dad. And I'm thankful for the way that he took me out and did things with me. And I still cherish them today. And it's good to know that I can see them again one day in heaven. Oh, aren't you thankful today that God has given us a heaven to look forward to? Hallelujah. You know, those that have your dads with you today, you're thankful. God still has my dad here with me. Those whose dads have gone on, you're looking forward to that day. Oh, hallelujah. You know, God is so gracious. He has people here on this side, and then he has people on the other side ready to greet us. You know, never forget the joy that you've brought your father. You know, as I looked at my children when God gave me my children, the joy they brought me. Always remember the joy you brought your dad. You say, but I've given my dad some hard times. I've really, you know, I've not always done what dad wanted me to do. You know what? That dad's forgiven you. Hallelujah. That dad still loves you. His love is still with you. Oh, hallelujah. Because you have brought great joy to your father. When you were born, your father was ecstatic. Some of them were jumping up and down. Some of them may have given out some cigars. Some of them may have some big balloons. But I, I, can, I can remember vividly how when my children were born, the joy they brought to my life. And, and you know, you bring that joy to your parents' life. And you can bring more joy as you begin to draw closer. You know, God can bring restoration and reconciliation into people's lives. You know, that's why Jesus taught about forgiveness, because forgiveness <laughs> means closeness. Because wherever there's anger and bitterness, there's distance. And, of course, no one uh, should put themselves in a situation where they're going to be beaten down or, or put down or, or anything like that. And we have to know, have boundaries in our lives. But God wants to draw us together through Forgiveness, and that's why Christ said forgiveness is so important. Because when we forgive, when we realize how much we've been forgiven of, then we can forgive others. And you know, today God is speaking to our hearts. And he's saying, I have forgiven you. Would you just thank him for that forgiveness right now? Thank you, Father, for that forgiveness. Thank you, Father God, because you have forgiven me. Thank you, Lord. Because, God, I know I bring you great joy. Even though sometimes I let you down, God, I know that you still take great joy in me. You formed me and you cherished me. I am the apple of your eye. I am chosen by you, Lord, to come into this world. In my mother's womb, you formed and fashioned me. Oh, hallelujah. And I have put on this earth for the greater purpose that you have called us all to do. Lord, we thank you because of your forgiveness, we can be your instrument. We can bring healing to others. We can bring blessing to others. We can bring anointing into their lives. Hallelujah, Jack. The Holy Spirit. Mm. 
is working in you and through you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Father looks down and he smiles. And he says, because of my son, Jesus, we are totally one. You are one with God right now. There is no separation between you and God when you trust in Christ and ask God to forgive you. You are reconciled to your Father God. Let us stand. We're glad that you could join us today for our program. You know, God is speaking to you. As you've been watching this program, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you and showing you what it is that you need from the Lord. And whatever it is, I want you to know we're here to pray with you because we know that God can reach you right where you're at. So if you've never received Christ as your Savior, pray with me. If you need something in your life that God is wanting to do, then also you pray with me because the Holy Spirit will minister to you and do what He desires as we pray. Dear Father God, I just thank you for sending your son Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you went to that cross and on the third day you rose again. And Lord, that you care about what's going on in my life right now. And Lord, I'm coming to you and I'm saying, Lord, I'm bringing myself to you. I'm turning this situation over to you. I'm tired of carrying it. And I know, Lord, that you want to carry it for me. And Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And Lord, I thank you right now that you're a part of my life. And Lord, as I continue to look to you, I know that you're going to give me the strength for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so today, I'm trusting in you. And you said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you and you will direct my paths. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. And I'm so thankful that we can be a part of what he's doing in your life. Continue to read God's Word, the Bible, and continue to go to God in prayer. Just tell Him what's on your mind. And if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to the Souls Harbor Church, located at 451 West Helen Avenue in Pontegorda, Florida. As you come here, you'll feel the embrace of God's love. And you know, as God works in your heart and life, He makes us a part of the family of God all over the world. And we're just thankful today that we've had this opportunity to be a part of your life. May God richly bless you. Until we meet again, keep your eyes on our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.